what's up everybody? My name is Yesenia here with OPT and today we got something very special for you. Winter is here and we got the top 15 objects for you to image this season. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for fresh astronomy content every week. In this list, we will be going over the top 15 astronomy objects, including what constellation they are in, what type of object it is, and the best focal length to capture it. Also, just so you know, the measurements we are using are based off of a standard micro four-thirds sensor, like the ASI 1600. So these measurements will change depending on your sensor. All right, let's get started. First up is the Orion Nebula, or M42. We had to start things off with one of the most popular deep space objects, which is also perfect for beginners. M42 is the most visible and famous deep space object of the winter sky. It's an emission nebula, which means it's made of ionized gases that emit light of various wavelengths. And actually, it's most people's first target to shoot. So if you've been thinking to get started in astrophotography, this is your chance. You can find the Orion Nebula in the Orion constellation with your naked eye, in dark skies, even with some light pollution. For visual astronomers, this is a perfect object to observe with binoculars. And for imagers, M42 is best shot with a telescope between 250 and 500 millimeters, and it can be shot in either narrowband or broadband. Up next is the Pleiades Cluster, or M45. M45, commonly known as the Seven Sisters, is an open cluster of more than 1,000 stars being held together by their combined gravity. This is the closest deep space object on our list at only 444 light years away from Earth. This beautiful star cluster can be found in the Taurus constellation. Just look for the question mark or Subaru logo in the sky. M45 is bright enough to be seen with the naked eye and even in moderately polluted skies, making it another perfect object to observe with binoculars. But if you're wanting to capture M45, it is best shot with a telescope between 250 and 500 millimeters. At number three, we have the Jellyfish Nebula. You can find this nebula in the constellation of Gemini. The Jellyfish Nebula is a supernova remnant which means it is the leftovers of an exploded star. And it is best shot in narrowband using a 300 to 450 millimeter focal length. Next up is the Crab Nebula. The Crab Nebula is a type two supernova that is located in the Taurus constellation. This nebula is mostly shot in narrowband, but just so you know, it's a tough object to get due to it being so small and dim, but provides a very satisfying result for anyone who's up to the challenge. For this one, you'll want a 2000 to 4000 millimeter focal length to get the most detail. At number five is the Monkey Head Nebula. This nebula is an H2 emission nebula and can be found in the constellation of Orion. It's around 6,400 light years from Earth. The Monkey Head Nebula is big and bright, and you can get colorful results when shooting a narrowband. A good focal length for this target is around 700 to 1000 millimeters. Next up is the famous Great Andromeda Galaxy. Long exposure photographs reveal the Andromeda Galaxy to be a whole cluster of stars similar to our own Milky Way, which is why it is also known as our sister galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy is so distant that only when a telescope and camera are combined can you capture its true stunning nature. At only 2.5 million light years away from Earth, this galaxy looks huge from our perspective. In fact, it's actually about six times bigger than our moon, and it can even be seen with the naked eye under dark enough skies. To get the best capture of Andromeda, we recommend you use between a 200 to 400 millimeter focal length. The Andromeda Galaxy happens to be most people's first imaged galaxy. Was it your first image? Let us know in the comments below. Moving on to number seven, the Orion Constellation. Home to many beautiful winter night sky objects, the Orion Constellation is best shot with any wide field lens and a perfect object for your star tracker. With a long enough exposure, you can pick up some of its many nebulae and hydrogen clouds. These become especially apparent with dedicated astro cameras or an astro-modified DSLR. Not only does this constellation house the Orion Nebula, but it also has the Horse Head and Flame Nebula, the Witch's Head Nebula, the Running Man Nebula, Bernard's Loop, and many, many more. At number eight, we have the California Nebula, also known as NGC 1499. The California Nebula can be found in the constellation of Perseus, 
which is very close to us at only 1,000 light years away. It's also an emission nebula famously named because of its shape of the state of California. The California nebula can be shot in both broadband and narrowband, but narrowband is best to really bring out the details. If you want to capture the entire nebula, you're gonna wanna use a focal length between 200 and 500 millimeters. Up next is the Beehive Cluster M44. You can find this busy open star cluster in the Cancer constellation. The Beehive Cluster contains about 1,000 stars and is the third brightest object in the Messier catalog. You can see M44 from a dark sky site and it's a great broadband target to capture using a 300 to 500 millimeter focal length. Next is the Horsehead Nebula and Flame Nebula. You can find this captivating duo in the Orion constellation right on the edge of Orion's belt. The Horsehead Nebula is a diffuse dark nebula and the Flame Nebula is an emission nebula. Both are around 1500 light years from Earth, which is very close in relation to the rest of the universe. To capture them both, you can use a focal length between 350 to 600 millimeters, and they can be imaged with both narrowband and broadband. And number 11 is the Sol Nebula. You can capture the Sol Nebula with its companion, the Heart Nebula. At only 7,500 light years from Earth, this bright and large nebula makes a great target for imaging. The Sol Nebula is an emission nebula, perfect for narrowband or broadband imaging, and is best imaged with a 250 to 500 millimeter focal length. But you can use a 150 to 200 millimeter focal length if you want to capture it with the Heart Nebula, which happens to be our next target. At number 12 is the Heart Nebula, which is attached to the Fish Head Nebula and part of the Heart and Soul Complex. These two are hard to miss since they're both very bright emission nebulae. It's a great narrowband and broadband target and is best captured using a 200 to 400 millimeter focal length. Or you can get up close to the heart of the heart nebula and capture the Mellet 15 using a 1000 millimeter focal length. Up next is the Flaming Star Nebula. This emission nebula is in the constellation of Auriga, 1500 light years from Earth. You can capture the Flaming Star Nebula with a 300 to 500 millimeter focal length and is best shot in narrowband. This nebula is very long, so shooting it with a square sensor might be a little tough. You can image the Flaming Star and our next target, the Tadpole Nebula, together with a focal length between 250 and 300 millimeters. At number 14, we have the Tadpole Nebula. The Tadpole Nebula is an emission nebula 12,000 light years from Earth and can be found in the Auriga constellation. This nebula is best captured with an 800 to 1000 millimeter focal length and also makes an amazing narrowband target, producing a lot of detail and wavelengths to process. Last, but definitely not the least, is the Triangulum Galaxy. Find this spiral galaxy in the Triangulum constellation, 2.7 million light years from Earth. The Triangulum Galaxy, Andromeda Galaxy, and the Milky Way are the three major galaxies that make up our local group. The Triangulum Galaxy is best imaged with a 500 to 1000 millimeter focal length in broadband, but you'll definitely want to pick up some hydrogen alpha data for its bright red nebulae. And that wraps up our best 15 objects to observe or image this winter season. Let us know which target you're most excited to capture in the comments below. By the way, if you don't have a micro four-third sensor and would like to know what focal length would be best with your sensor, you can use apps like Stellarium or other astronomy tools that we will leave in the description below. So check them out. Also, if you share any of these objects, make sure to tag us on Instagram using the hashtag OPTeam for a chance to be featured. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider giving this video a really quick thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. My name is Yesenia here with OPT and we will see you in the next video. Clear skies.